So this problem is for grade 12 physics. It's a Newton's second law applied in two dimensions. And so that second dimension comes in with the ramp. So we've got two connected masses. It's kind of like an Atwood machine uh, where mass two acts as a counterweight, gonna pull up uh, M1. So the question reads as follows. We have a counterweight used to slide up an object. The inclined plane is 40 degrees. The counterweight's mass is 35. And there's no friction or mass to the uh, pulley or the string. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.23. So we're just going to do A right now, and then B in a separate video for the acceleration not to exceed 0.42 meters per second squared up the ramp. What must be the minimum mass of the object? Okay, so we're going to try and figure out the M1. Right? In other words, this is asking M1 equals what? So hopefully we'll get an answer around 39 kilograms. So there's M2, that's 35. And M1 we're going to try and figure out. Before we really do anything, you've got to set up your coordinate system for the ramp. And so my axis is rotated, so my x's and y's are like this. So this is my positive direction and my positive direction. So positive is down the ramp. If you make positive up the ramp, you just get the opposite uh, kind of, your force vectors will be opposite in sign than mine. Yeah, the forces that are in play, we have the force of gravity from the second mass, call that Fg2. We have the force of gravity down the ramp from the first mass, so I'm just going to call that FGX1. Force of gravity down the ramp from mass 1. Might make a little more sense if I put the 1 FG1X. There you go. First mass, force of gravity, the x direction. We also have the force of friction. Also acts down the ramp because this object is going to move up the ramp. Okay, based on that other mass pulling it up. We also have the force of tension. It, it is there, we can't kind of completely ignore it, but they're equal and opposite, so I'm not going to put it in my equations. If, if another question asks you to calculate force of tension, you should be able to do that. But for here, I'm just going to not write down force of tensions, as they're equal and opposite and they cancel each other out. Okay. So the equation that governs this problem is really Newton's second law, written down by its concept definition, sum of all the forces, the net force is equal to the sum of all the masses, so the entire amount of mass that's going to move times the acceleration that they move. All right, and now our forces in play are just kind of going from left to right. We have force of gravity 2 added to the force of gravity of the first object, first mass, in the x direction. We have the force of friction in play, and that has to equal the two masses added together times the acceleration. So you're given enough information so that when you plug in all of your numbers, the only thing you will not know is M1. FG2, FG1X, and FF all break down into separate calculations, separate little formulas. And so we'll write those down here. FG2 is the force of gravity. It's in the negative direction, so it's negative 35 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared to give us its weight. FG1x is down the ramp, it's positive. It's going to be uh, M1, which is what we're looking for, times 9.81. That's its full weight. Taking into account the ramp, we need the sine of the angle, sine 40 degrees. Force of friction, coefficient times the force of gravity, times the cosine. The force of gravity is going to be m1. Gravity is 9.81, acceleration, and cosine the angle. So remember, the formula for friction is coefficient times the normal force. The normal force is equal and opposite to uh, the force of gravity in the y direction. So that's why we're using the force of gravity relationship. And that has to equal the two masses added together, m1 plus 35 times the acceleration. The acceleration is in the negative direction up the ramp. Very important to get that negative in front of there. Very easy to miss that. It's a very common mistake, so please be careful. Right. Right. Now we number crunch and be careful. 35 times 9.81 should be negative 343.35 plus uh, so 9.81 sine 40 this will be 6.331, I'll just round that to two decimal places, M1, plus 
plus 0.23 times 9.81 times cosine 40, 1.73 m1. That has to equal, now we expand the brackets on the other side, negative 0 0.42 m1 minus 35 times the 0 0.42, 14.7. Looks uh, a little big, but all it is is a kind of a grade 9 equation with variables on both sides and watch your, watch your signs. Be careful when you work it out. So I'm going to put all of my M1s onto the left side and all my numbers on the right side. So it'll end up being 6.31 added to 1.73 then add to that the 0.41 because it changes sign as it crosses the equal sign comes to the other side. So on the left I have 8.46 multiplied by my mass M1. That has to equal, bring my 343 to the other side, becomes positive, so 343.35, subtract 14.7, 328.65. Dividing both sides gives us our mass. It's going to be a positive number, that's good. Mass should always work out to be a positive as it's a scalar value. So that 328.65 divided by 8.5. Four, six gives us two digits, 39 kilograms, exactly what we were hoping to get.